So, hello everybody. I noticed with shock and horror that I last reported about CLEP, the Clever Audio Plug-in Standard, in spring of 2024, also quite a long time ago. So it's really necessary to have a look what happened since then. And I guess the biggest thing since then is what you already see here on your screen is that now Studio One Pro in version 7 supports Clap as well. Strangely, only in the Pro version, which I think is a bit of a strange decision for such an infrastructure standard. But nevertheless, it's now available in one of the biggest stores on the market, which means that at the end of 2025, we have Clap available in several big doors, namely Bitwig Studio, FL Studio, Reaper, as well as now Studio One Pro. But also on the plugin side, many things happen. There's many new plugins available in the CLAP format. And as we will see later on, there are lots of lots more to come pretty soon. But more about that later. So Yuhi, one of the first companies starting out with CLAP, they have now their full product palette adapted to CLAP. So Presswork, also Tyrell and 6, Basile Repro, a Sepralet, and even Sepra Legacy in version 2 got now adapted to CLAP. And for sure, their new version 2 of Ubix, so all their little effects plugins have support for CLAP. And on the open source side, Search was also one of the first supporters for CLAP. And the Search XT synthesizer has CLAP support for quite some time, but also Short Circuit XT, which is still a bit in the alpha phase, but it's coming along nicely, got now adapted to CLAP. And I'm really looking forward to a final release of this nice sampler plugin. The usual suspects, which are by now really well known for some emulations of well-known hardware from the 19th, like Waldorf and Excess synthesizers, they added now Nodal Red, a Nord Lead emulation, as well as Xenia Waldorf emulation, and they also support the CLAP format. And they also showed a first teaser of the Roland JP8000 emulation, which looks really, really nice and impressive and sounds really good, is yeah in the making and also with clap support. And then there are many, many smaller developers which joined the party, for example, Audio Thing, Audio Damage, Tell Software, SMAO, Lab, Auburn Sounds, Audio Blast, and many more, which are much too much to show in this video. But one example for you is here the Audio Thing, and for example, the RAS9 is the analog origin and strings machine. And as you can see, it's available on Clap on all three platforms, and also big kudos they support. Linux as well. So there's also something to look into that many, many companies are, are now providing solutions on the Linux platform for us musicians. But the baseline for developing plugins and hosts are the frameworks so that the developers can easier integrate this new standard. And iPlug2 is one of these frameworks which already supports now since last year CLAP as well. But more important, choose is the framework that each and every developer is using. And this is really a biggie that they promise to bring CLAP support in choose nine. This will basically mean that each and every plugin will get CLAP support out of the box in the future. And this is really, really great news. And there is no announcement about what the timing of that should be, but but there is a hope that it might still happen this year. If not, I guess not too far in the future. They're currently refining MIDI 2.0 solutions in a public beta. And I guess afterwards, CLAP will happen as well for Choose 9. But let's have a look at CLAP itself. Since the last version, lots of changes happened, mainly in the domain of consolidation and clarifying questions of developers in the documentation. But there are also some drafts in the work. As you might remember, there is a feature set of base features which each and every plugin and host needs to support. So it can say it supports CLAP, but there are also extensions, which is a great concept 
that not each and every plugin needs to support the whole feature set or does not even need the whole feature set for their task. And you can then say to the host, I support these extensions and then it will be made available. There are five new drafts in that regard and one is a mini curve display, which is a bit of a strange one, I think, because it deals with graphics. It allows a plugin to draw into a certain area a curve. So the idea is like you see here in Cubase, if you look here at the channel strip, that you can have such graphics of, for example, a Q curve, and this can then be drawn directly from the plugin itself, which means now that if such a channel strip supports this clap extension, all EQ plugins you have from third companies can be directly integrated into such a channel strip. So next one, project location. I'm not sure what this is really helping the plugins, but I guess there are use cases. So this extension gives the plugin more information about its location, which means where is it in the track hierarchy located and what is the type of track? Is it an instrument track or an audio track? So this might be something which can be helpful to plugins, but I did not really find a use case, but I guess there are some. Next one is more practical gain adjustment metering. So maybe relevant for compressor plugins like Presswerk. I think Presswerk already from Yuhi supports this new extension and Reaper added this already to a recent update. And then the DAW can give feedback on the gain reduction, for example, by drawing a meter. Then a more technical extension, which means if the plugin needs some scratch memory, so just some area to work in and which gets discarded anyway. And if each and every plugin does that, it takes up a lot of main memory from the computer, which is not necessary. And this extension allows that this scratch memory is reused by all the plugins in the chain and this saves quite some memory. And last but not least, undo is always a problem with plugins. So if you have external plugins and try to do undo on them, this can create some really heavy <laughs> issues. And there's now a specification for that, which is already integrated in Bitwig since 5.2.5. And this allows now a clean redo and also the integration in the normal undo system of a door. So you can read what you are actually undoing doing and I guess that's a really really big step forward. But there are also big news on the VST side of things. And one can now guess if that is somehow triggered by Clap itself. I don't think so, but it might be one of the reasons that Steinberg did that step forward. So now with version 3.0 8 of VST3, it's now a license under the MIT license. And the MIT license is very permissive. It basically means use it, but don't bother me. And the only thing you need to respect is that you keep the copyright notice and the license tags in your redistributed software. And that's basically it. So the MIT license is nice for companies as well as for open source developers. And big kudos to Steinberg. and. And I guess the main reason is they had a change in management, which is now much more open to connecting to open standards, which we already saw by their support for DAW project, which is an exchange format between DAWs, which was got also initiated by Bitwig as well as Presonus. And they already support this now for quite some time. But that's not the only news. There was another one which somehow did not show up on the different sides is that they also changed the licensing of ASIO. So it's not sadly under MIT, but it's dual licensing. So it's the same as VST3 was already licensed. So before VST3 had also dual licensing, which means you could get a company license for your closed source software and you could get a GPL license, which is nice for 
GPL software, but not if you have your open source software under a different license. Nevertheless, now ASIO has the option to use it in GPL software, and this is very helpful for applications like OBS, which they also named explicitly in, in their publication of this change. And OBS Studio, I guess everybody knows that for recording videos, and it's under GPL2 license, so they can now integrate ASIO as well, which is nice to have. And same for Arduino. Also, Arduino is, if you view the license here, GPL version 2. So, ASIO can also be integrated in Arduino. And also, Search XT, if you ran it standalone, can now also integrate ASIO. So, really nice steps forward from Steinberg. And big kudos to them that they're finally taking such steps. And this is really nice to see for the musician. So many news here and it will be great times in the future, I think, for us musicians with these changes in CLAP as well as with VST3. And I'm really looking forward to the release of Choose 9 because, as I said, many updates will then show up for CLAP from different developers which use Choose. Yeah, I will keep you posted about these changes in the future. And until next time, make some funky music.